So far, on our Making Board Games adventure, we've been cruising through Czech Games Edition timeline until the pivotal release of Codenames in 2015, a significant milestone for CGE as well as the entire board gaming world. Yet, what might have slipped under your radar is the emergence of CG Digital a few years after CG was founded. This clandestine unit within CGE was quietly at work crafting digital adaptations of CGE board games and other game apps. Vláďa was originally video game designer and also programmer. I was also programmer and we were actually working together on uh, something uh, for his game Fish Fillets uh, before even CGE started. When we were doing Through the Ages, the very first original Through the Ages before CGE was founded, we were actually playtesting it online. To have a successful board game you need to playtest on table a lot, but to have it really well balanced and uh, fine-tuned, uh, you need a lot of games to be played and uh, we always tried to have some way how to play test online because you can then get much more players to the game you can analyze uh, data from the playtesting we even developed our own uh, internal system uh, for playtesting board games uh, and uh, yeah I, I, I was using it even when developing board games because then I can try the game uh, much faster than just print and cut everything and put it on the table and then to try to hide it when there's dinner time, <laughs> something like this, uh, when you play on your computer screen. Uh, my wife was, uh, my wife is a programmer, she was developing the system itself to, uh, for online playing and uh, me, she or other, uh, other programmers were implementing uh, particular games we were developing. And uh, so this experience also helped us when we started a uh, digital team. The first time we really started talking about this seriously was when we were at the gathering of friends and Apple actually started selling uh, iPads there when we were there. And I came there with no intention to buy iPad or whatever, but I left with one. Uh, because I saw um, how it works and uh, the tactile feeling of it, that you are moving parts and so on. And from the very beginning, uh, there was actually Small World implemented on the iPad uh, when it was released. So I saw how it can be nicely played on that device. Uh, and when we saw it, we both were hooked that, you know, it would be nice to do something for it. Vladia's first idea was Galaxy Tracker, actually. And he told me about that this device would be great for Galaxy Tracker, basically at the gathering of friends, nearly immediately after he saw the device and how it works and so on. Daniel Musil, who is now in charge of our digital part, uh, of the company, he was working in the same company uh, where Vladia was working before CG. I was working with Vladia and doing some uh, evening projects. Uh, I asked Vladia if he has uh, some project to do in the evenings, and uh, he said yes. We should meet uh, Peter, so we uh, sit together and uh, talk about Galaxy Tracker and it was the beginning of a CGE Digital. The digital section in Brno was really small. We had this small small office that was a big like a bathroom. <laughs> there were, we were just three programmers working there. And when we had meetings with Prague, then uh, with people from Prague, then, then, then like 10 people came to that small office. <laughs> We sit on the ground in a circle and <laughs> we had the meeting. It was really funny and we really grown, grown really huge from back there. Now this digital section has about 20 people and the headquarters in Prague has much more. And 
the digital journey started with Galaxy Tracker, which soon turned into an odyssey. As the first game we picked, Galaxy Tracker, that actually with its real-time elements uh, looked suitable for, for an app. Later we realized that uh, actually the real-time element is not that suitable because uh, uh, board gaming on, uh, on devices is a lot about asynchronous play. So we developed, uh, developed an, a special asynchronous mode uh, where you really can play your turn and let other players play. But uh, other than that, uh, it was really, I believe, it was a good pick because the Galaxy Tracker app uh, well, uh, does very well and players really like it. At least they are writing to us and giving uh, good reviews. We were doing about one game per year. So it was our goal, and Galaxy Tracker was three years. So we will took time to make it uh, as perfect as we can. It was our first project, so there was uh, many topics. We didn't know about, for example, networking to make it multiplayer, or uh, AI, or UI. <clears throat> it was challenging. The reason why Galaxy Tracker was actually so um, time-consuming to do was that it's actually not just one game but multiple games together. Because if you will look at the just board game Galaxy Tracker, um, it looks easy, but when you will try to play it on the on the digital device, you have uh, something completely different when you are building the ship. Then you have something completely different when you are uh, flying with the ship, and uh, then on top of that there is uh, this big campaign which is not in the board game at all, uh, and. All these three things were basically needed to be implemented completely separately. And on top of that, we even invented uh, the uh, turn-based variant of uh, Galaxy Tracker, which was not in the board game at all. Board games are usually games for multiple people, so you can play online. But it's sometimes, and especially with those apps, it's kind of hard to find people to play with. Um, so, typical how, way how to solve it is to introduce some AIs, some uh, robots who can play instead of players. But what you will do when you will defeat the hardest ones several times, then you have no interest, at least we don't have interest to play it again. So this is why we came with an idea to develop this big campaign for Galaxy Tracker as a really interesting solo experience, which will change how the game is, to have a really nice story behind it and so on. Uh, so uh, this is why we had to do something like that. Of course, when we were doing that, we were kind of uh, thinking how many copies we would be able to sell, because it was kind of important to know, uh, since um, it will pay off uh, or we will lose money on it and so on. So, um, uh, in terms of uh, production, uh, it took something like three times more time than we anticipated or something like that. But sales were actually better than we anticipated, something like five times better than we anticipated. So in the end, it was good, uh, but uh, it, it, it was a challenge, uh, definitely. Because of Galaxy Tracker, we changed uh, offices, so it uh, was not one room anymore. And we hire more people for uh, free ages, 
so I was uh, happy the company is starting to get bigger. When I joined, the company was much smaller. Uh, I joined as a part of the Brno team that was working on the digital apps. And we were just renting uh, a smaller flat, so it's, it's nothing like the CG office in Prague now. And, but those are good times too. Doing uh, Through the Ages, I believe that we decided even before Galaxy Tracker was released that uh, we will work on new edition of Through the Ages and that we will actually try to do it both at the same time for uh, as a board game and also as a digital game. Um, so I remember when we were discussing how graphics for the new edition of Through the Ages will look like, uh, that we were already thinking how it will work in the digital game. So things in the physical board game which are on the cards were already drawn in a way that we were, we knew that we will be able to use them effectively uh, even on very small version on the app. Uh, on, on the phones. But there were challenges to implement such game because it was something very different contrary to Galaxy Tracker. Uh, every single play of Three Ages is, you know, a uh, game from the ancient times till uh, future. Uh, so it really doesn't make sense to make some campaign over that. So Vladia came with an idea that uh, there will be really interesting challenges uh, that you can play with tweaked rules. Galaxy Tracker was already made when I came and they were just switching to, to three ages. And so I was just helping with community management. That means basically I was answering questions on the internet. Uh, I was talking with the fans, answering emails and organizing the testing. So kind of like inviting people to join the process and um, help us with the testing the apps. Uh, it took a while to put it together and I was really impressed with just the amount of testing and uh, the sheer energy of the testers that we just invited people from all over the globe to join in and yeah, they were really good players <laughs> and it was fun just to analyze the data and hear their opinions and feedback. I remember that for Through the Ages we had the leaflets printed with, with some release date and we released it uh, one year later. <laughs> we already gave out a lot of these leaflets to people in Essen. We were joking that yeah, we can use the same leaflets, just rewrite the year next. <laughs> The release of Through the Ages app was a big milestone for CGE and it has many hardcore fans all around the world. Lots of people actually prefer to play the game on the app and there is many tournaments held every year with lots of dedicated players. But the biggest milestone for CGE Digital is yet to come. Our vision was uh, to make one adaptation per year we didn't make it. <laughs> well, first game was three years and second two years. Uh, and code names are five years already because it's a very important project for us and we don't want to let it go. So we are not afraid to cut something and doing it again. Actually, when code names was published and it was kind of obvious it will be a big success. Uh, people at our company, our main pro uh, programmer uh, Dan, uh, came to me and said, so that means uh, now we will be doing code names, right? And I said, no, that's not, not, not a good idea. Yeah? Uh, this is very problematic, again, to make, uh, uh, to make uh, an app. Yeah? 
there's so many disadvantages we, we would have against apps that are developed directly as uh, for this digital format. Uh, and I named like six very good reasons, uh, very good uh, arguments why it is very difficult to uh, create uh, this Codenames app. One of them, for example, is that uh, if you make a mobile game, modern, modern uh, mobile game, uh, it's basically about some uh, rewarding loop that gets automatized. Yeah? You just do some stuff, it requires some, some uh, light thinking from you, but you automize it and then you just get this rewarding, uh, rewarding feeling that you are great at it. Yeah? Uh, Codenames is completely vice versa. Yeah, we require you to concentrate all the time, to think, yeah, to be creative all the time, to read words all the time. Uh, so you cannot l lose focus. You can, if, if you start, uh, if you fail to routine, that, and that's another thing. If you fail to routine, you start playing wrong. You uh, overlook words and uh, and so on. And not only it destroys uh, the game for you, it uh, gives you a feeling that you are bad. But this also uh, destroys the game for the for your partner, yeah. And there's many others. We decided, okay, it should be about uh, people, not about uh, playing with AI, yeah, because it uh, it should be about like connections between people. But then uh, the success of Codenames was even bigger. So I said, okay, we should probably do it anyway. It will be hard work. It will be lots of work. Uh, but if we don't do it, then some other people will do it and they will not do it right <laughs> because they will not take all this, uh, uh, all this effort to mitigate the disadvantages. So we decided to go for it and uh, uh, now several years later we are at the finish line. <laughs> And at the moment we already soft launched the game here in Czech Republic because we are Czechs. So we developed the game uh, in the Czech language. Uh, we launched it here in the, in the Czech Republic. We already have some feedback from the real players and it's overwhelming. Like it's really good. It's much better than we expected. We expected the really good reactions, but people fell in love with the digital version. They are spending hundreds of hours playing the game and there's so much to do and it's really great and it give, give us the motivation to work more on the, on the proper English uh, version of the game and to launch the game globally. My mother, who never played a, a mobile game, uh, now plays and plays well, <laughs> yeah, intensively. She's our good tester. <laughs> yeah, and so that's uh, it, this is really something that was worth it. So first we had to decide, you know, how to approach it and what monetization model for the game we will choose. And uh, so we were studying uh, first a lot uh, uh, the freemium monetization model where people are actually playing games for free and they are kind of nudged to buy either crystals there or coins there or whatever and use it as a, some kind of game of money to get some advantages, play faster, level up faster and so on. But after we found how it really works that, um, you know, in that industry uh, those developers are kind of targeting very small group of people who are willing to pay extremely big amount of money and spend it there, like uh, over thousand dollars for in, in that free game. And actually they are trying and, and kind of hacking how brain works and by testing, uh, A-B testing, that they tried two different variants, uh, which way they will get more money and so on. And we agreed that we do not want to go this path at all. And when you don't want to go this path, you cannot imagine that you will be able to make any 
uh, reasonable amount of money on freemium model. Uh, so then freemium was not an option, so we decided that we will go for premium model. Which means that to get a game you will have to pay some money up front. Of course that would mean that you know lesser amount of people will, will actually join. So we made this decision and uh, we started working on it. What we do at CGE, if we are creating a new digital game, it's not about just one-to-one -one copy of the exact version as you would play on a table. You can play this on a tabletop simulators. Uh, that's something we don't want to do. We want to do. Uh, we want to go, like, we want to make a few extra steps to put something extra into the game. The app. It's asynchronous, so it's a turn-based. You can play multiple games at once. That's the main core mechanic, and that's uh, uh, really the main benefit of the digital app, that there is a random matchmaking, and you can play with random people, and it works really well. So you can really play code names anytime, anywhere. And as I mentioned, you are playing multiple games at once, and you can spend hours every day playing code names with different people and you get slightly different experience from each game and i think it is the most unique way and why the app is so popular at least here in czech republic because people they want to play more but now they finally have the ability to do so the app isn't meant to replace the board game it's it's similar uh, but it's quite different experience in a way you are playing with people you don't know you are playing with the strangers of course you can play with your friends and that was something that surprised us for example because um, in the app you can play with random people or you can play with your friends you can invite them from your friend list and uh, we thought that more people would play the random matchmaking uh, but it showed us that uh, even the friendly games are really popular, so that means people want to play with their friends uh, even in an online version, the digital version. There's a lot of new features that I, I really love and my most favorite are the new game modes because uh, in the app there's a lot of ways how you can play. There's something we call VIP missions and each mission has slightly different rules. And for example, the most favorite, not just mine, but I think if you ask everybody who is uh, playing code names uh, here in Czech Republic they, in the app, they will answer you that the most favorite game mode is called Minesweeper and is the combination of the really classic uh, computer game Minesweeper with the code name. So after you reveal a card, there is a small number that will tell you how many friendly agents are in the area in the surroundings and the grid is much bigger you are playing for example it's a seven by six so there's much more cards on the table and in the combination with the minesweeper it's really fun and there's a lot of stuff like this also i like to play this uh special collector's mission that means that uh, if you collect first five uh, let's say uh fantasy words uh it uh connects you with other three people and it takes all the words you collected and create a game from them. So you have these five words you collected in the game definitely and uh, you play them with uh, fantasy worlds only uh, and only with people that also collecting fantasy. So, and it's completely different challenge, yeah, because it's a different game than with the normal words. So, yeah, I like I like it all, of course, yeah? And if I don't like something, I change it to the next version. Right now it's February 2023 and we are still working on the game. As I already mentioned, we launched it here in Czech Republic uh, as a soft launch and we are gathering feedback from the real players and we are uh, taking their feedback and we are improving the game and also we are trying to solve a lot of technical stuff at the moment because uh, Currently, we have about 10, maybe 11,000 of players, but with a global launch, uh, we have to make sure that the game uh, will work with hundreds of thousands of people, because uh, we think the Codenames app can be uh, really, uh, really big. Every app is a bigger challenge than we expect. All these parts have to be polished really well, so it always took longer than we expected. And now with code names, we maybe even overdid it with all the stuff that we put there. But you know, we really want 
We don't want to disappoint the players that are expecting something more from us.